now can everybody help us give a warm welcome to Joel Sartori. Thank you. Can I get a quick picture of everybody? Go for it. Wiggle them around. Very nice. Perfect, beautiful, beautiful. It is very exciting to be here, and I want you guys to turn your phones on because I need some help at the end of this show, all right? Okay, so let's start in. I've been a photographer for 22 years for National Geographic. I know they're going to start showing pictures in a minute. I've photographed everything you can possibly imagine on every continent. Stingrays and wolves coming after me and muskox charging me and polar bears trying to break into my van when it wouldn't start for an hour. You know, it works out pretty good sometimes, but the only thing I've ever been bitten by so far is bugs. Lots of bugs. Those are the feet of a very desperate photographer who hadn't had a good picture in three days. That's what you do. I get a question all the time, how do you get a job with National Geographic? You guys want to know that, right? Well, I grew up in Nebraska, and I took the kind of pictures I thought were weird. Ah, oh, I like that. Nebraska, that's nice. I took the kind of pictures I thought were weird or different or funny, like the guy dusting the stuffed sheep in the back of a sporting goods store or, or a bad dog trying to rip my face off or even worse dog maybe. Some dogs are really bad. And so eventually I got on with National Geographic and I took these kind of pictures. Wherever I go, I'm looking for the interesting, the amazing, the beautiful, the weird, the anything I can think of to keep readers' interest. That's my job. I am a storyteller. A gorilla's foot, that'll do. Maybe a lion in a tree. And so as I travel around, I tell stories. That's the key. Everybody can shoot pictures, but can you tell a story? The stories that I shoot, I want to make the world a better place with them. So when I get called by Geographic to go cover the oil spill, I believe every time I go out that I'm making the world a better place. But with the oil spill, do you think that's the case? It was bad. We all knew about it. We saw that pipe spewing crud on the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico for weeks. Did we change our ways? Did we do anything different? No. Why? Because the price at the pump didn't go up. And so it goes on. I want you guys to keep an open mind tonight. Oil, we know that we need to get away from carbon emissions, don't we? The world's getting hotter. What about wind? Everybody believes wind's a great thing, and it is, right? It is, but it's complicated. Those turbine fields, they're a thousand turbines each. They don't pollute, but they kill a lot of birds and they kill a lot of bats. We got to watch where we put the turbine fields. That's the take of one turbine per season. 32 birds, 32 bats and five birds a year. That's not good. We have to watch where we put the turbines. And so whenever I tell stories, whenever I tell stories, I watch it, and I watch for things that are weird. I watch for things that are cute. I watch for things that are absolutely not understandable. To show you this picture, this is why I'm doing these, is to show you this picture. How does this relate to koalas? Well, north of Brisbane, Australia, that's the only place the koala can live is on a golf course. And so what happens? He wanders off the golf course, and he gets stuck in the suburbs, and they get attacked by dogs and hit by cars. And I go there knowing that I can shoot this picture with the help of an animal hospital. That's one week's worth of dead koalas, one week's worth of dead koalas killed by dogs. And that picture runs around the world. And when the whole world sees that, they pressure the government of Australia to protect the koala in northern Australia. And they have done so now. That's why I do my job. That's why I do it. But, but it is not enough. We are in a race now. There are so many people, 7 billion on our way to nine or 10 billion. I worry about amphibians. They're amazing, they've been around for millions of years and they take in toxins through their skin. And there are nine of this one left. There's six of this one, three of this one, and you're looking at the very last, Rab's fringed limb tree frog. That's the very last one. He lives in isolation at the Atlanta Botanical Gardens. That's the last one. And so when I photograph him and I film him to show you guys, I think, Will we finally care? 
One extinction is too many, and we stand to lose hundreds of species now. What do we have to do to get people to care? Well, for me, it's called the photo arc. The photo arc. That's the thing. I'm going to go around the world, and instead of just photographing animals out in the wild, I'm going to photograph them on black and white backgrounds. This animal was scheduled to become stew that night. Now he's immortal. He's on black velvet. And so I photographed half of the world's captive species. That's about 3,000 species. Half of them. 6,000 species, I figure it'll take me another 10 to 15 years and I'll get all the captive species in the world. It's taken me eight years so far. The goal and the reason is because we stand to lose half of all species by the turn of the next century. Half of all species. I don't want any to go extinct, let alone half. And so I think, you know what? If we look these things in the eye, we'll eventually care. And you know why that's important? Because it is folly to think we can do half of everything else to extinction and not have it hurt us and not go extinct ourselves. And so I go on and I do these things. And you notice that in this show there are no chimps. I'll tell you why in a moment. No chimps. Remember that. We've saved species before. We've saved the giant panda, the whooping crane, the black-footed ferret. These animals all got down to fewer than 20. And we've saved them. We can do it. We have to pay attention. That's where the photo art comes in. No chimps, remember? No chimps. Here's why. What do you think? Does that look pretty good? All you can do is hope. They're pretty strong. I hear they could rip your, rip your uh, arm off and beat, it, beat right. you to death with it, right? Exactly. Yeah, pretty much. So now, doesn't this look nice? Doesn't this look nice? How long will that last? 60 seconds? That's why there's no chimps. And they throw their poop at you, too, while they're at it. It's not good. So the last thing I wanted to go through. What can you do? What can you do? Don't drive a big vehicle. Drive a hybrid. Ride your bike. Run. Recycle, use the right type of light bulbs, the right type of appliances, buy your food locally. Why pay to truck a strawberry across the country in the dead of winter if you live in a cold place? Eat seasonally. It's better for the environment. It's better for your health. Get off the computer once in a while and get out and get muddy and go fishing. And force your schools to teach environmental education. Get schools to do that again. Really important. But the biggest thing of all, the biggest thing of all, Watch how you spend your money. This is my daughter Ellen illustrating how much stuff she has after she cleaned her bedroom for me. We know that it's about money. You don't have to wait till you're 18 to vote. You vote every time you break out your purse or your wallet. You're saying to a retailer, I approve of what this is made of, and I want you to do it again and again and again. That is the power to save the world or destroy it with your money. How are you spending your money? How are you spending your money? And so here's where you come in. The Photo Arc is a brand new website we're launching. Go to the Photo Arc. Tell your friends. Like me on Facebook. Whatever it takes, give this project lift. Thank you, guys. You rock. You're staying up. We got questions. Okay, right, we got time for questions. give it up for Joel. Give it up for Joel. All right. We've got your questions. Uh, we'll see if you've got all right. answers, all right? All right. The first question comes from the beautiful state of Wisconsin. The question is, what is the most dangerous animal you've ever photographed? A drunk logger in Oregon. Okay. Who proceeded to... <laughs> he, wanted, he wanted my film and I wouldn't give it to him and it was bad. It's really bad. But as far as animals go... I'm in their house. I'm in their home. So dangerous, I'm putting myself in harm's way. I suppose if you want to get between a mother grizzly and cub and get charged and have to chase up a tree because of it, I guess that's bad, isn't it? Yeah. But not a scratch. Here I am. I'm pretty nimble when I'm scared. Awesome. All right. Question number two comes from the great state of Texas. What made you want to be a photographer? What made me want to be a photographer? Because I'm serious. I'm not as smart as you guys. Uh, photography in college didn't require math or chemistry. 
True story. All right, and the last question comes from Korea. And the question is, how many countries have you been to and which one is your favorite and why? I've been to 38 countries. I like the United States a lot. And I want to back up and answer that last question real quick. Why do I like photography? Because it has the power to change the world. One picture turns things around overnight and saves species or changes social situations. Photography is powerful. And you guys are too. My favorite quote of all time, let me throw this out. Never doubt that a small group of concerned citizens can change the world. It's indeed the only thing that ever has. Every one of you could save species, could save the earth if you want to. That's all there is to it.